This guitar is killer! Hey guys, today we're checking out the all new headless guitar from Boya and Ziki. Remember not long ago, I reviewed their other guitar, the sort of dinky style 24 fret premium shred guitar from Amazon. And if you recall, I said I liked this guitar quite a bit from the construction to the playability to the looks and the absolute premium quality materials that they used on it. Well, this one is no different. Again, an awesome guitar, very well built, premium quality materials for a budget guitar. In fact, I like this one better than the other one. And this guitar has a feature on it that I've never had on another guitar, ever. In fact, I don't even think I've ever played a guitar that has this feature. I will tell you what it is and I'll go over all the features and the specs and everything, but first I want you guys to hear me play it. Check out the all new jam that I wrote and recorded on this guitar just for this video. guys so the new headless guitar from Boya and Ziki yeah really cool guitar really nice I really like it I want to get right to that thing where I said I've never had this on a guitar I've never played a guitar that had this feature before and I am talking about the fanned frets so in case you don't know what I mean by that if you look closely at the frets 
Notice that they are not straight, that they're sort of at an angle. And if you really look closely, guys, if you look at the high E string, look at the nut here. Let me see if I can get my finger on the nut, where the nut is. See how the nut is kind of angled in like this? And then if you look at the bridge, look at the saddles on the bridge. On the high E side, the saddles kind of go this way closer. So what that means, guys, is on the higher strings, like the high E and the B and the G, uh, the strings are shorter because the contact point, you know, they're like this. The nut's like this and the bridge is like this. So these strings down here, they're a little bit closer together from the contact point to the contact point, the nut to the saddles on the bridge. And it gets longer as it goes up to the heavier lower strings. Now the reason for that is, I think the main reason is intonation. And I have to say, it actually works. One of the problems that I have on a lot of my guitars is I have trouble getting like the proper intonation on the high E string up in the upper frets. You ever notice how like it sounds good down here, it sounds in tune, but when you get way up here like past the 15th fret that the high E string stares to sound like, uh, like it's too low, like it's out of tune? And that's an intonation issue. And what I end up doing on a lot of my guitars is I'm pushing the saddle for the high E string like forward as far as I can get it to kind of compensate for that. And it works for the most part, but that's why this design is so cool because it, it takes that into account. So setting the intonation on this, on a guitar with fan frets, is gonna be easier on like a regular guitar that doesn't have the fan frets. And it actually works. Now I was a little worried guys, so because you know the frets up here, they're, you know, they're not straight. They're a little bit like this. I thought when I'm playing it, my fingers are gonna like slip over the little fret bar and I'll slip onto the wrong fret or I'll have trouble hitting the right notes but that didn't happen at all for whatever reason like I'm playing no problem hitting the right frets hitting the right notes so I guess you could say that I am now a fan of the fan frets check out the bridge this is not a cheap bridge this is not like the bridge you find on the other budget headless guitars this is much nicer much more high-tech Look at all the things that you can adjust on this. In addition, we've got two humbuckers. These are Alnico 5 humbuckers. This is a high output humbucker, about 17K according to the Amazon listing, and the neck pickup's about 8K. And we've got a three-way toggle switch, one volume, one tone, and the push-pull pot for the split coil. We've got a really nice quilted maple veneer on this one. This is in a green-yellow burst. I love it because, oh, green's my favorite color. But it also comes in a natural spalted maple top, which also looks really nice. It's a mahogany body with a five-piece maple neck. That five-piece neck makes it more stable and a beautiful rosewood fretboard. I really like this because not only does it play and sound fantastic, it's just really comfortable. It's lightweight, it's compact in size, not too big. The neck profile is not huge, but not super thin either. That's the one thing that for me personally, if I could make something better, I'd make the neck a little thinner but um, it still plays great and feels great. The frets, you know I gotta talk about the frets. Of course it's a 24 fret guitar. The frets are stainless steel. These are hand polished stainless steel medium jumbo frets and the fret work is good. I did lower the action a little bit. I got the little Allen wrench out, turned it, lowered these little brass saddles a little bit to get the action in a more comfortable position for me and still no fret buzz. So. Yeah, the fretwork is good. And for the nut, we've got a real bone nut. Now as far as fit and finish and everything, uh, there's no flaws. I can't find any flaw in the finish anywhere. No mess ups, no mistakes. Everything's aligned properly. Everything sounds right, plays good. I'm just really impressed by this guitar. So obviously, this guitar is getting the bald shredder stamp of approval. It's pretty mind-boggling that this sells for under 400 bucks. I'm really happy with it, and if you wanna check it out, I've got a link for it in the description that will take you to the Amazon listing. Now, I need to talk about something that is uh, not so fun to talk about, unfortunately, and um, this is something that I'm gonna be doing another video about coming up really soon, maybe this week or next week, and I've gone back and forth like on how to approach this, should I just ignore it completely? Should I say something about it? And 
You know, ultimately, I decided I just can't keep my mouth shut about this. If you go to the Amazon listing and you look at the reviews, there are two reviews. One of them, pretty good review. And you look at the other review, it's pretty brutal. And if I didn't have the guitar in my hand myself, I might think that that review was completely accurate and true. But having this guitar, I've got a real problem with the validity of what that guy says in his review. So I'm not gonna go into it right now. Like I said, I'm gonna make another video to go into that and give my thoughts on that. And um, I'm not gonna hold back, okay? Because I just think it's, uh... <sighs> well anyway, you'll see in the next video when I talk about this guitar and that review and uh, the problems with that. And before anybody says anything like, well, the one you got is so much better because the, the company handpicked it and they sent it to you and they made sure it was a perfect guitar. Guys, when companies send me guitars, guitars that are for sale on Amazon, they come straight from the Amazon warehouse. They don't come from the company. The company's in China. They didn't ship this to me from China. This was shipped straight from the Amazon warehouse exactly as if I went on the computer and ordered it and paid for it myself. And trust me when I tell you that in the Amazon warehouse, they don't have good guitars set aside and then the not so good ones, uh, you know, somewhere else. Like, well, we'll only send the good ones to the YouTubers and anybody else gets the other ones. They don't have time for that nonsense for a budget guitar. It just doesn't happen. I'm going on and on about this too much. There will be another video to address that coming up really soon. So just to sum up, guys, Fantastic guitar, really good, great value for the money, really good quality, and if you want to check it out, the link is in the description. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>